I don't think that I can change the world through music. I'm happy when my audience is happy. If people say that they cried while listening to me, if they were happy, or even if two people met while listening to my music, that would be the small contribution of my music to the world. Paris is my hometown. I love this place, even though it's very big and there are a lot of cars. There are also nice places, such as the Alexander III Bridge. I would say that Paris is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. One of the most beautiful views in Paris is here. You can see the people passing by and the river Seine from the bridge. There's a kind of magic. It's much harder now for young people. They have to study a lot more. For a musician, it's a matter of luck whether or not one has a successful career. Life gets more and more difficult everywhere. That's why I'm very aware of how lucky I am to have such a career. Ballad for Adeline is the piece that paved the way to the big stage for me. I owe my success to it. As soon as it was released, the ballad became very well known in France. And then, thanks to it, a world of possibility opened up to me. I haven't been in this concert hall for more than 35 years. Coming back here is thrilling because I once played 17 consecutive concerts in Playel Hall. Classical music was played at that time and my music is a combination of classical and pop. That's why it was a challenge for me to go on stage. Now the hall is completely renovated. Pop concerts are organized in it. The memory of performing on that stage, of facing a full house 17 nights in a row, It is very emotional for me. The response of the audience was warm, and at that time, that was very important to me. These were my first concerts in Paris. Returning to play El Hall is a very emotional moment for me. I rarely come here because there are many tourists, but it's wonderful to see Paris from above. I used to live over there, maybe a little bit further. My childhood was quite ordinary. My father was a musician, but he was very often ill. We lived in a neighborhood in the suburbs of Paris. I had a carefree childhood. 
We didn't have much money, but I was free to do whatever I wanted. I started playing the piano, and later on, I progressed in my musical talent. I started earning my living as early as 17. After that, I quickly turned to popular music. I played with many French artists, and I also took part in several studio recordings. I never again thought about foregoing a career as a classical musician. I had to meet a lot of requirements, and I had a lot of work to do. In fact, my partner Olivier Toussaint and I were looking for a pianist to interpret one of my compositions entitled Ballad pour Adeline. That's how he told me about a young, good-looking and talented pianist. I remember that one day I got a call from Olivier Toussaint. He told me about this composition, Ballad pour Adeline, by Paul de Senville. He wanted to audition me. I had auditioned a good number of pianists. But the young Philippe Pagès, aged 23, sparked my interest. He was charming, a bit shy, but an excellent pianist. I went to meet with him, and he told me that there were a dozen pianists auditioning. I was not the only one. The other pianists who had auditioned either didn't have a good enough look or their performance was not convincing enough or was too pompous. Olivier passed on to me the sheet music for Ballad pour Adeline and I went to my home to practice it. So at the audition the following day, I played it the way I felt it. When I handed him the sheet music for Ballad pour Adeline, he said he liked it, but he would study it a bit and come back tomorrow. That's what he did, and he played it exquisitely. But how did Philippe Pages become Richard Clitterman? In fact, neither Paul nor Olivier liked my first name. In English it could be Page, while in French it is Pages. In Spanish it could be Pages or Payes, so they asked me the names of my great-grandparents. And on my mother's side, there was a Clederman. They said, Clederman sounds great, but Philip Clederman is not convenient. So Paul said, Richard. That's how Richard Clederman was born. He was blonde, blue-eyed, and charming but he was still like an adolescent, a young teenager. But as the years passed, the adolescent seemed to transform into a handsome, seductive, and attractive young man who had a touch of effortless elegance. This was noticeable on numerous photo shoots and when he appeared on television. When he began his career as a stage performer, I also noticed that whether it was in Europe, America, or Asia, he was appealing to his audience. He had something that we had not expected, charisma. 
he was not aware that he was benefiting from this treasure that is offered to only a lucky few on this earth. I could not expect that Ballad Pradin would become so successful all around the world, and I never imagined to have a career as a solo artist. When Richard Clitterman became internationally successful, we started looking for a manager, an agent. But I remember that at that time, none of them looked interested. They were saying, well, you know, no pianist has a real potential. That's how we became his managers. And we still are. After the ballad's success, many parents called their children Adeline. I remember that we received many requests to send hundreds of photos of this cute Adeline, who had inspired Paul de Seneville, the composer of the ballad. I was four years old when Ballad Bradlin was released. I feel like I have always known this piece, because I often listen to it. It's hard for me to say whether Ballad Bradlin reflects my daughter's character. For me, I associate this ballad with my family, because it was composed by my father. The emotion in this piece is truly beautiful. Adeline is very kind and gentle, but she is also persistent. In its tenderness, the ballad resembles Adeline herself. I felt happy because my father had written music for me, and when performed by Richard, it's even a greater pleasure. At my school, the children's parents knew that there was a tune devoted to me. Besides, Richard sometimes came by to leave discs and to sign autographs. We do not compose for ourselves. I'm glad that people respond to my music. Three or four people a day write to me or send me clips of them playing ballad pour Adeline. And so I see where they live and how they live, whether they are rich or poor. My music is for ordinary people. It does not move the intellectual elite. It is close to the people. I realized that 40 years have passed since the release of Ballard pour Adeline and that it would be appropriate to celebrate this 40th anniversary with a new composition. I must say a big thank you to Ballard pour Adeline.
There are fans waiting for me after concerts. I accept their congratulations. We have our photos taken. If I have time, I also meet my fan clubs in different countries, often in Japan. There are people who have kept track of my performances for many years. With such fans, I can relax and tell them a little bit about myself. After all, they ask questions. They give me presents. And it's always touching. When people started asking for autographs as a memento, I realized that I was already a success. I first heard one of Klinemann's own works at his concert in China when I was five. I have been a fan of his for 25 years now. My parents love Klinemann's music. When I was a little boy, I started playing the piano. I soon learned some of the pieces that he performs. I have a lot of his discs, more than 200, I believe. His performances are truly moving, unlike classical music. A lot of us, as children, started to learn to play the piano after his concerts in China. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time now to give your applause to Mr. Richard Kletterman. I don't like to talk much, but I think the audience likes what I try to communicate through my music and all the emotion that I feel in the moment. With the piano, I express myself through music. I don't have any regrets in life, quite the opposite. One can learn a lot from bad experiences too. I have two very good children. The moments I share with them is my greatest pleasure. Sadly, my daughter passed away. It is very sad for parents to lose their child this way. She was seriously ill. She was 38 when she left us. My son is 34. He has a happy life. He feels proud of my success. He always keeps up with what I do. He is not involved in the music, though. When he was a little boy, he started learning the piano and drums, but he left. He listens to music and loves everything I do. He works in a pharmacy laboratory. I'm able to find time for my hobbies, like going to the cinema. I prefer action films, or reading a book, or going to a concert. I like sports too. I go running. I have to keep in shape, because I'm not getting any younger. I read autobiographies. I'm very interested to read about the lives of certain performers. Thank you. 
I am extremely proud of my achievements so far, but I always keep in mind that this is the present and that the future lies ahead. So I try not to place too much importance on the balance. One of the most difficult moments in my life was when music turned into a means of making a living. Another difficult time was the loss of my daughter. Despite the pain, I always try to overcome the difficulties and the lack of success. I felt stronger afterwards.